Good afternoon, everybody, uneducated economist here. So after the Federal Reserve came out and said that they were not going to be lowering the Fed funds rate come March, I had a few people message me in comments saying, dude, you called this. You said that the Fed wasn't going to be lowering rates. And you have actually been very good at predicting a lot of stuff that is happening within the economy coming from the Federal Reserve and their monetary policy strategy. And now... I look back on it and I think about a lot of the predictions that I had made and yes a lot of them maybe didn't come out in the timelines that I had anticipated and maybe a lot of them weren't exactly accurate when it came to like saying the inflation is transitory because we still really haven't seen transitory inflation although a lot of people feel that the inflation has now left the economy or at least left the the idea of being so rampant that it's going to be causing more damage going into the future. I know a lot of people probably do believe that there's going to be more inflation heading into the future and rampant inflation and dollar destruction and all the other stuff that goes with it. But at this moment in time, when you look at what the markets are believing, they see that the Fed is going to be lowering interest rates going into the future because their fight for the inflation or fighting inflation is coming to an end. Like this is a very common narrative coming from everybody. And so when I think about like some of the things that I have learned personally, I don't really like take into consideration a lot of stuff that's coming from the mainstream media or coming from the narrative, right? It's because I've looked at this stuff personally in, in took it internally. Like I took it in so much so that now I can describe it out there without having to look it up. Right. Talking about average inflation rates or talking about the, you know, monetary policy strategies from like John Williams position. All these things that I have learned and I have internalized now gives me a view of the economy that is so much different from what a lot of people out there see. And so when they see the Federal Reserve is going to be lowering interest rates because they, you know, won the inflation fight, I'm thinking, well, I, I don't think you quite understand what it is that the Federal Reserve is looking for when it comes to average inflation rate over time, because they're not going for a 2% average or 2% target. They go for a 2% average inflation rate over time. That right there gave me a much different view than what a lot of people see out there. And so I think in all the I take in all the considerations that I feel that the Federal Reserve has put out there as far as their strategy goes. And when I have taken that information in, I have put myself into a position in which that now I think a lot like the, what the Fed is thinking. Now, I don't think the Fed is accurate or good or inaccurate or bad or anything else. I just think like the Fed thinks. I personally believe that we should be back on a gold standard. Maybe not so much for the United States because we're not a manufacturing base, but as a personal belief for my own position, I think that would be great. Right? I don't think having a fiat currency and central banking and debt-based and all this other stuff, I don't think that's great. Right? But there's not much I can do about it. So I have to conduct myself in a way that is now understanding that the Federal Reserve may not be making mistakes like a lot of people believe. And that all of this was done intentionally. So now when I go and I start doing predictions from the Federal Reserve, it's not like they failed. It's not like they screwed up. It's not like they don't know what they're doing. What they're, my predictions are is their monetary policy strategies and how they are going to accomplish those things and how it is that I position myself to deal with that. So now one prediction that I definitely got wrong when it came to studying this, and I, and I look back and I think, man, why did you miss this one? How did you get this particular prediction so wrong? Okay. And, I, and it's when they asked me, how high are the Fed funds rates gonna go? This was the question that was asked of me back when they still had the Fed funds rate at zero. And I said, I don't believe that they are going to get those Fed funds rates, Fed funds rates much more than two and a half percent before the markets really start to get upset, before the economy starts to shake, before things get to a point where, you know, it's just like they're going to start causing some major downturn. Right. At least this is what I believe that financial markets will begin to freeze up and, you know, all the bad things. But it didn't happen. In fact, they blew right past two and a half as if it was like not even a consequence of anything. So I got to thinking, it was just like, how did I miss that? How did I get that wrong? Right. And did I really get it wrong? So the more I got to thinking about it, when I said that the Fed would not get their Fed funds rate up more than two and a half percent, 
It was during a time in which that we had the neutral interest rate at a very low level. Nobody knows exactly what the neutral interest rate is, but there was predictions that it was somewhere between zero and one and a half percent. Now the neutral interest rate is the rate in which that the Fed is neither accommodating nor restricting the economy. And at zero to one and a half percent, that was pretty low. But when the Fed starts to raise interest or the Fed funds rate, when, the, when they start to raise their, their funds rate up, once they got it up to two and a half percent back in like 2018, it really started to create an upset. But what was taking place at the time was something very different than what we are experiencing today, or even when the Federal Reserve was moving their Fed funds rate past the two and a half percent. And that is that neutral interest rate, which was very close to zero, and if the Fed funds rate was above that, it would be very restrictive, the neutral interest rate started to rise. And it is now moved up with the Fed funds rate. Meaning that as the Fed was raising the Fed, their rates, their, the funds rate, the neutral interest rate was following right along behind it. So even though they might have blown past two and a half percent, and might have been very restrictive to the economy at the time, the neutral interest rate began to rise and it made that less restrictive. So now there's an assumption and I have no way of actually proving this, but it's coming from, um, from some, uh, I can't remember, was it Claudia is her first name? S-A-H-M, and I'll try and find the article and leave it down in the description for you guys. But what she is saying is that the neutral interest rate is now 100 basis points below the current level. Meaning that we're almost at a neutral position. If the Fed drops interest rates just a little bit, like one, one percentage, then they'll be at a neutral position. Or at least this is kind of the idea behind it, that if they dropped interest rates just a small amount, they would be somewhat fairly close to a neutral position where they are neither accommodating nor restricting the economy. Right? So this is how I got it wrong, is that I didn't state it properly. What I should have said back then when I said that the Fed was not going to get their interest rates much more above than 2.5%, the Fed funds rate, what I should have said is that the Federal Reserve is going to have trouble keeping their Fed funds rate significantly above the neutral interest rate by that 2.5%. That's what I really should have been saying. The Fed funds rate is going to adjust no matter what. They are never going to keep this thing positioned at any one level for any length of time unless they are trying to do some sort of quantitative easing or monetary stimulus or for whatever reason they cannot get the stimulus out of the economy, they will drop the Fed funds rates down to zero. Now that they have the Fed funds rates back at 5%, which is much more elevated than we have seen in the last 15 years, that is their ammunition they get to use that ammunition in a way that can stimulate the economy. If the neutral interest rate, which is not set in stone, and there's no real way of determining what the neutral interest rate is today, but you can use assumptions. If that neutral interest rate continues to rise, then what we will find is an economy that is in a less restrictive position. If the neutral interest rate falls and the Fed stays still, it will just naturally make it more restrictive on the economy. This is something to think about because the Fed can stand still and still have accommodating or less restrictive positioning taking place just by the neutral interest rate rates rising and falling. So this is one of the things that I definitely got wrong by calling the Fed out saying that they would not get their Fed funds rate up above 2.5%. What I should have said is that they were not going to get their Fed funds rate much more than 2.5% above the neutral rate. And that would have been a much more accurate statement. And pretty much all the predictions that I have had would have been fairly accurate as well. Now, granted, time will tell on whether or not the housing market does go into a major crash, whether or not we have massive unemployment, whether or not the dollar ceases to exist and we turn into a BRICS nations, you know, or one of the BRICS nations or some crazy thing like that. All these other things that are happening very well could or could not, may or may not come true, right? 
But as far as the predictions that I had made about inflation, about interest rates, about what the Fed was planning on doing, I've been fairly accurate on pretty much everything when it, when it comes to those uh, when it comes to those positions. And now I'm not trying to brag it up. I'm just saying I studied a lot of the Federal Reserve's documents, their own words, the FOMC, the voting members of the FOMC, learning about each one of these people. I have taken in a lot of information from this and I share it with you. All right? I share it with you not only in these regular videos, but I also share it in live streams. And if you're not a member of the channel, I would consider joining the channel. It's a dollar a month. Not only is it massive information that you get from me and all the hard work that I put into it, but then you also get to ask questions of me and the community. And the community that I have built, or I didn't want to necessarily I have built, but I have joined, you know, the channel. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, it's nothing like to me, I don't even feel like I really did anything other than just put out the videos. And this community is growing, right? They have come together because they know like what we are doing is not screwing around here. We don't have time to waste, right? Most of us who are working class individuals who are trying to figure out what it is that we need to do for ourselves so that we can be in the best position we can possibly can, a lot of us don't study this stuff and we don't know what it is that we're supposed to do. Once you have retained and, or taken in this information, you have retained it, right? Now you just intuitively just start making the right decisions. You know what you're about ready to do out there when it comes to the economy. You're not listening to some politician. You're not listening to some other economist out there. You're listening to your own knowledge, your own thoughts, your own beliefs. I guarantee you, you will be making much more, much more appropriate, beneficial decisions for yourself when you do this. And so join the channel. Be part of this community. Learn as much as we have learned so that, you know, you can share it with your friends and family. Right? This is like, we don't have time to screw around. This is what I'm saying, you know. And figuring this stuff out and having the confidence behind it that you can actually say, no, the Fed is not going to be lowering interest rates in March. They haven't gotten to their average inflation rate over time yet. And you can tell this by just reading their own speeches, their own documents, their own words. Right? Once you do that, all the rest of the BS is kind of just that turns into that. It's BS. Right. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Uneducated economist. I'm going to leave links down in the description to the channel. So please join the channel. One dollar a month. It's a dollar to you, but it's everything to me. All the hard work I put into it. And we will come back on, let's see, I think Saturday we got basketball tournament for Freddy. So we'll probably do something, say, like Sunday afternoon, like early afternoon. All right. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.